unidentified vessel just west of West End Grand Bahama, traveling course 240 at... To detect targets on the surface or low-flying aircraft at any uh, long range requires an airborne radar. You have to get the radar up in the air to where it can see over the curvature of the Earth. Well, the problem with an aircraft, uh, number one, it can only stay on station for a very limited period of time before it runs out of fuel. Second thing is they're extremely expensive to operate. So basically, we took our existing technology that we've been using uh, for some 20 years of placing a radar in a balloon or an aerostat and using the aerostat to carry the radar. We have been providing data to U.S. Customs now for something over four years. These have been from the land-based air staffs. Now they would like to extend the range farther. Since these are fixed on land, it's a logical next step to go to a uh, ship-based air stat so that you can move it to a greater range and can have more time to track the suspect vessel or aircraft. Flight crew, report to the mooring platform and prepare the aerostat for launch, please. Yes, sir, Charlotte and I are reporting to the platform. Bridge, this is the maps in. Bridge, this is the maps in. Captain, we are preparing the aerostat for launch. Please turn the vessel into the wind and make no radical force changes until the balloon is free of the tower. No problem. Give me about two minutes to get it into the wind, and then I'll put it on auto. Sea-based aerostat system is actually comprised of two major uh, groups. The first is the vessel itself, which is known as the MAP vessel, or Mobile Aerostat Platform. Okay. The MAP vessel carries the ARS, or Aerostat Radar System. Those are the two major functional groups that we have. Platform, this is the map in. Platform, this is the map in. Uh, launch the aerostat at your discretion and proceed with the aerostat to mission altitude. Proceed with the aerostat to mission altitude. Roger, we're prepared to launch and we'll proceed at this time. Acknowledged. In this case, is a 56,000 cubic foot aerostat. It's 110 feet in length. It's approximately 37 feet in diameter. The aerostat is uh, designed to lift a 300-pound payload to altitudes uh, in excess of 2,500 feet with uh, a good free lift margin so that we can stay up there in bad weather. We normally launch and recover with three people. That's one person in the control console and two people running handling the lines on the outside. The winch in the mooring system is a 300-foot-a-minute winch that is totally redundant. When I mean totally redundant, the main motors that turn the hydraulic pumps, there are three of them. There is a main motor, an aux, and a redundant. And then the hydraulic motors themselves on the winch, there is a main motor and a redundant motor. And all it is is a matter of switching valves and switching and flipping two switches. The next part of the Aerostat radar system that's very important is called the MAPSEN. Okay? The MAPSEN is the Mobile Aerostat Platform Operations Center. Okay? It essentially functions as a combat information center, or CIC as the Navy would term it. All the airstat parameters that we downlink, such as pitch and roll and uh, balloon pressures and temperatures, are all displayed inside of the map center on a status monitor. Also, it is the uh, display area for the radar. Coast Guard Cutter Dallas, Coast Guard Cutter Dallas, this is the motor vessel Atlantic Sentry. We have a suspicious vessel. The radar that's uh, mounted on the balloon is a uh, Eaton Corporation APS-128 radar. Should give us extremely good performance in uh, even high sea states. They have the ability to select up to 30 tracks, and the radar has a tracker in it that assigns a number to that vessel that you're tracking, and then keeps track of it as far as range and bearing, speed and course from you. Also, lat and long. 2,500 feet of altitude, we're able to detect a 10 square meter target at 60 nautical miles. It's a 10 kW X band pulse compressed frequency agile radar. It has uh, several processing capabilities. It does uh, sweep integration, it has some log FTC built into it, and it has some CFAR built into it. CFAR means constant false alarm rate. CFAR is a mechanism whereby the data is threshold prior to being displayed for the operator. This gives the operator a uniform background to observe targets. 
gives him the best possible threshold for all areas being displayed on the scan converter. Drug runners or in intruders, when they believe they are being detected by radar, they'll go dead in the water. In an MTI system, he would disappear from the operator's screen. In our system, he would not because we do not have a minimum velocity. We can detect targets at zero velocity as well as targets at a higher, much higher velocity. The MAPSEN is obtains the TIP equipment or target information processing equipment. There are actually four sets of TIP equipment. The first set will be carried on the MAP vessel and located within the MAPSEN. The other three sets will be dispatched to other boats that will go out in a, uh, in a team with us. The uh, radar data will be automatically transmitted to the other vessels in the task force. The uh, air stat will probably fly in excess of 90% of the time. It will it'll stay in the air most of the time. It required that it stay aloft for 14 days without replenishment required, and we believe that it exceeds that by quite a bit. We also do have the ability to add a little helium if we have to without recovering the balloon itself. This system, the balloon pressurization and a radar, is designed around a concept called hot spares. That means that we have a 100% spare system that's setting down in our maintenance area. If we have a failure on the balloon, we can bring the balloon to the tower, open the windscreen, and change a box. We don't change components, we change a box. All we do is narrow the problem down to a box. And in probably less than 20 minutes, we are airborne again. The tether that holds the balloon to the ship and allows us to control the aerostat is somewhat unique. The strength member in the tether is Kevlar, very strong and very light material. The uh, tether in this case has a brake strength in excess of 10,000 pounds, which is more than uh, double the worst case load that we would ever expect to see on the tether. In addition to the Kevlar strength member, the tether has three fiber optic links in it only one of which is used at any given time, and it gives us two spares in the cable should uh, that operational fiber optic uh, link fail. We also feed uh, power up the tether through three power conductors. We take uh, radar data, and we take uh, airborne data, and through wave division multiplexing and a laser, we downlink that data. Now, at the same time that we're downlinking that laser data, we are also uplinking a laser from the map sand that has all of the uplink commands on it. If we have a fiber optic failure, the system automatically switches to an RF backup system. You won't even see the switch in data. It happens so quickly. We're able to operate the radar. We don't lose any station time. We know that we have a problem, but we can stay on station and operate an RF until we get a chance to fix that particular problem. The main engines of the Atlantic Century uh, were originally designed as locomotive engines are 16 cylinders and approximately 2,000 horsepower on each shaft. Additionally, in the engine room, we have two diesel electric generators and a diesel powered bow thruster, which enhances the maneuverability of this vessel. There is an illusion created by the size of the balloon that the vessel is restricting its maneuverability, and that is not really the case. The main engines and bow thruster of this vessel is very maneuverable and can be turned either direction, counterclockwise or clockwise. Uh, 360 degrees in its own length. The Atlantic Sentry is equipped with Loran C, Sat Nav, Omega, and of course we have all of the standard uh, navigational devices you would find on any boat, meaning a gyro compass and a magnetic compass. Uh, we have a satellite facsimile receiver to where we can get weather information. So essentially we have a vessel that is equipped to operate anywhere in the world. Also, RCA designed into the system the capability of acting as a mothership for a task force. As uh, I mentioned before, we have enough bunk space for 32 people on this vessel, okay? and we carry food and stores uh, to feed those people for a 30-day period of time. We carry over 200,000 gallons of fuel, and I carry over 140,000 gallons of potable water on board. Now, essentially, this allows me to, number one, pump fuel and water to other vessels to extend their mission time so they can stay on, on station uh, along with us. The second thing we can do is we can actually take people off of those boats that are out with us, which might be small chase boats and small and uncomfortable, and we can actually take the crews off of those boats, rotate the people from the Atlantic Century onto those small boats, and essentially give those guys a good night's rest and a hot meal and a shower uh, before they get back on our small boats again. So we basically have a, a mothership, and it allows us to go out as part of a task force and keep the whole team out there for extended periods of time.
One of the biggest challenges in the sea-based aerosat system that we uh, now have deployed was that they had to go out and, and actually build a boat from scratch 180 day period of time. And then sometime toward the end of this 180 days, we had to take all these, this collection of pieces, meaning a balloon, a radar, a mooring system, a, a boat, and all of this electronics gear that we had built that had never been put together before, and now in a very short period of time, integrate it and make it a truly operational system. I think that's one of the big pluses that we have over anybody else is we have people that have been experienced in flying balloons 10, 15, 20 years, some of these people. And uh, that's what makes us uh, good, really good at what we do. Is and I think this underlined very definitely that RCA is here to stay. RCA has been in the business for 19 years. RCA intends to be here for another 19 years and then maybe another 19 years after that. So uh, we are totally committed to aerostat business.